Well, this is the last week of the legislative session, which by law must end on midnight a week from tomorrow. A lot still needs to be done, notably passing a budget so the state doesn't shut down July 1st. One issue that is moving forward with surprising bipartisan support is a bill to legalize marijuana. A short time ago, I spoke with House Majority Leader Ryan Winkler about that and other issues. Take a look. I want to ask you about marijuana. You have led this thing for, for a number of years now. It looks like there's going to be a House vote on later this week. You actually are getting Republican support. Tell us about that. Well, support for legalizing uh, cannabis for recreational or personal use, uh, making sure that we have a safe, regulated marketplace, that we are expunging criminal records for people who've been unfairly targeted for, for law enforcement uh, reasons and can for cannabis in the past, uh, making sure that we're creating a marketplace that reflects Minnesota's values. All of those things are, are priorities in this bill, and they are priorities for Minnesotans of all political persuasions. We've been all over the state, and I've seen uh, Republicans, independents, Democrats uh, express support, express skepticism, and this is not a partisan issue. All right. Yet, it does look like it may not even get to a vote in the Republican controlled Senate, which has a very narrow Republican majority, just one vote. Uh, do you think you can pull some Republicans in the Senate as well? Well, I don't know that Senate Republican leaders are going to allow a vote to happen. Okay. Because if, if a vote happened, you, it poss this possibly could pass. I think it absolutely could pass. Uh, probably two-thirds of Minnesotans support this bill. They, they support legalization. It cuts across both parties. South Dakota, very Republican, passed it on the ballot last November. So I don't see any reason why it wouldn't pass both houses if the vote could come up in the Senate. All right. Let me ask you about the police reform bill, because what's interesting is that you, we're seeing Republican input as well. Uh, Representative Eric Lucero, very conservative, has input on the duty to report uh, you know, some bad acting or, or some bad uh, actions on behalf of a police officer. Are you seeing in some of these really critical things some actual possibilities of working together? We absolutely can do that. We also are talking to major law enforcement groups to get their input. When we passed police reform and accountability last summer, we did so by working with uh, the police union, by working with the chief, by working with the sheriffs, and only by working together with Republicans and with those uh, law enforcement officials are we able to get a bill passed. That's the political reality in the legislature. So we have to do what we can to make Minnesotans safe, make sure that police are accountable, make sure the system is fair to everyone. And right now it's not. I think most people recognize that, and I think there is fruitful ground for compromise and working together. Do you think a compromise will be passed? I think some kind of compromise has to be passed. Uh, it's absolutely necessary that we move forward in this moment. We can't let this continue, and I think everyone recognizes that. All right. This, of course, is a budget year. If you don't pass a budget by July 1st, the state shuts down. Do you think you're going to do it by the end of the session, which is May 17th, a week from tomorrow? You have to come back in June. There has to be a special session this year. So is that deadline of May 17th going to really hold, or does it mean anything? Well, the reason we have to have a special session is to extend the governor's emergency authority. He is ending the mask mandate by July 1. Most people's interaction with the governor's emergency authority will be done in July. But we have to have a June special session under law in order to continue to that point. So that takes some pressure off, unfortunately, for some people who are negotiating. I can tell you that Speaker Hortman and the House DFL is focused on getting a bill uh, done for uh, education, for taxes, for helping human services, for all the key areas of the budget by May 17th. That's our job, and we are doing everything we can to make sure that job gets done. You have a very powerful chair in the Senate who is threatening to hold up the entire budget unless uh, the governor caves on auto emission standards. The state wants to adopt basically the California auto emission standards. What is going to happen there? Well, the last time Republicans threatened to shut down, the last time, in fact, they, we did shut down, they also put constitutional amendments on related to voter ID. And when the extremes of the Republican right take hold of their party, bad things happen. So we're hoping that more moderate voices will prevail and we won't shut down state parks in order to protect the environment in order to address climate change. That's not a choice Minnesotans want. It's not a, a choice Minnesotans think should happen. And I think the Republicans in this case, need to get on board with Minnesotans enjoying their summer and doing something about auto emissions. 
All right. Or Representative Ryan Winkler, the Majority Leader of the Minnesota House, uh, thank you so much. And it'll be interesting to see that vote uh, come up uh, later this week, uh, how many Republicans you'll get. Um, and we'll see if it gets a vote in the Senate. Doesn't look like it right now. We're still making progress, Esme, so thank you. Okay. Thank you.